Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. In today's lecture, we will be discussing the some of the terms that are given in your data sheets of MOSFETs. Prior to this, uh, we have uh, looked into some of the basics of MOSFETs and uh, we have also looked into the switching characteristics of the MOSFET. So, now when you want to design the MOSFET, so you have to read data sheets and uh, what will be the important notations and performance curves that is what we are going to look now. So, to explain it let me uh, draw the MOSFET first. So, this is your drain current ID, this is your drain source and gate and then you have the uh, drain to source voltage VDS. So, the important uh, notations that will be there in your data sheet is the drain to source a breakdown voltage. Okay, this is the maximum voltage the MOSFET can block across it. Then uh, another important one is your RDS on the static drain to source on resistance. So, that is basically whatever is the resistance associated with the MOSFET while it is conducting RDS on. Then the continuous drain current ID, okay, whatever is the continuously means DC current that can pass through it continuously that is uh, the ma maximum current that, that will be specified. Then pulsed drain current, this uh, we had uh, discussed before when we were discussing diodes also that is possible that this kind of pulses may be given to the MOSFET for some short time period. Okay. So, if it is given for some short time period then this uh, uh, whatever is this peak of it you call it as IDM that will be much higher than this continuous drain current. Okay, so, that also will be specified in the MOSFET data sheets. Then drain to source uh, leakage current that means when this device gets turned off there will be some small leakage current that will be flowing although ideally we assume that no current will be flowing but there may be a small leakage current that will be flowing. So, that is your drain to source uh, leakage current. Then the maximum gate to source voltage that can be applied over here. Then the threshold voltage between gate to source, this is the minimum voltage that is required for the MOSFET to uh, turn on. So, that threshold voltage will be uh, specified. Then your forward transconductance GFS, we had uh, seen these characteristics before and uh, that slope GFS forward transconductance uh, will also be given and uh, there may be some leakage current associated with this gate to source also. So, what happens is that when it turns on at that time during the turn on process there is a, a gate current and while it turns off then also there is some current. But while it is conducting, while the MOSFET is conducting or while it is off during that period uh, we expect no current to be flowing in this gate region, but there is a small current and that is the gate to source leakage current. Then next uh, these performance curves uh, will also be provided in the data sheets. Uh, your uh, this tra transfer characteristics we just saw the GFS. So, uh, this uh, slope will be your uh, GFS and uh, this is your uh, threshold voltage. So, this is the curve between your drain current ID and gate to source voltage VGS and uh, what you can see is that the threshold voltage is uh, around 4 volt. So, above that volt when voltage when we apply the gate to source voltage that is when the drain current will start building up. Now, these performance curves I have taken from uh, uh, manual application manual provided by Semicron. Then uh, your this shows the typical forward characteristics of a MOSFET. 
So, here uh, this is the graph between drain current and your drain to source voltage VDS. So, yeah, this is your drain to source voltage VDS and this is the drain current and here what you observe is that that uh, as your this uh, gate to source voltages increases, so these are all gate to source voltages as the, they increase it slowly goes from cut off to your ohmic region and for it to go into the ohmic region what you observe is that the gate to source voltage has to be above 8 volt and here what you see is that gate to source voltage below 4 volt this MOSFET is in cut off and that is what we expect from this graph as well and as the voltage increases it goes to active region first and then finally it goes to ohmic region as the gate to source voltage further increases. Then notations related to switching will be provided in the data sheet. This we have discussed uh, before also I just wanted to um, show you again for uh, the sake of completeness that uh, your gate charge, gate to source charge, gate to drain, Miller charge, turn on delay, rise time TR, turn off delays and TF fall times in the um, uh, your turn off those will be provided in the data sheet. Then your input capacitance CISS will be provided, output capacitance will be provided, reverse transfer capacitance which is basically a CGD that will be also provided in the data sheet. And this effective output capacitance now as I had told you before that these capacitances they vary with drain to source voltage. So, uh, I mean effective output capacitances are also given ok for different conditions you will be seeing this uh, output capacitances will be provided and uh, then sometimes data sheet also provides the effective output capacitance. Then another graph uh, which you will find in the data sheets is your this gate charge characteristics how your QG varies with the VGS. So, this nature we had observed in your switching characteristics for VGS. So, what happens is initially this increases and uh, uh, it has to cross uh, this threshold voltage which was around 4 volt and then it has to reach to the Miller voltage which is around uh, 6 volt for uh, the MOSFET for which this graph is shown and then during this time is your uh, Miller period. So, this is your uh, Miller period and this Miller period how much it is it slightly varies with what is the drain to source voltage that is applied. So, as you can see that as uh, your this uh, VDS drain to source voltage increases your Miller period is also increasing and somewhere around here you have your threshold voltage. And then this is how the uh, QG is increasing. So, in this region your uh, 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 QG uh, you can observe uh, it is increasing and the so gate to source voltage is also increasing. Further what happens is that the voltage does not increase, but it is the uh, charge which continues to increase and this is mainly associated with your QGD, not QGD actually it is associated this part is associated with your CGD or you can call it as QGD also uh, if, you, if you want. And then over here what happens is that after the Miller period is over the further the gate to source voltage increases and it settles to the finally whatever is the gate voltage that is provided by the driver. And at that time also you can see that this uh, QG charge keeps on increasing. Then this is the graph for your um, uh, capacitance 
these how these different capacitances input capacitance output capacitance and reverse transfer capacitances how they are going to vary with your drain to source voltage VDS. So, we can see here that your input capacitance uh, this is not varying a lot it the drop is less, but your reverse transfer capacitance uh, this is uh, varying um, a lot as your VDS increases and output capacitance also you can see that it is varying. The notations related to body diode in the data sheet what is the current rating of the body diode that will be provided. The diode forward voltage drop, so when we have this MOSFET and uh, then you have this uh, anti parallel body diode, so as this conducts it has a forward voltage drop and that is written as VSD because uh, the current flows from source to drain when the diode conducts. Then TRR the reverse uh, recovery current in the uh, body diode uh, sorry the reverse recovery time and the reverse recovery charge QRR and sometimes data sheet will also provide um, your the reverse recovery current IRR and the turn on time may also be provided. Now, we will be discussing another important uh, term that is given in the data sheet a graph which is provided which is called a safe operating area. So, before that let us recall the turn on and turn off characteristics that we have seen before. So, this is your drain current and this is your drain to source voltage and uh, we had observed that that during these two intervals your uh, both the drain current and uh, drain to source voltages they are high together. So, this is for your turn on and this is for your turn off. Now, if we look into the trajectory if we plot trajectory by plotting a graph between your ID and uh, VDS what we will be observing is that as it turns on what we see is that first the current increases. So, here what we observe is that that as it is going to turn on your voltage remaining close to the blocking voltage your uh, the current increases. So, this is how the current increases and then after that the current has almost reached to uh, what it is supposed to be carrying while it is on this uh, drain to source voltage decreases. So, that is what we observe here this current increases and it goes down and this drain to source voltage is going to decrease. And if we turn off what do we observe at that time first the voltage increases and at that time the current does not increase much. So, that is what uh, we see here this first this voltage is increasing and current does not decrease and here the current is going to decrease and your uh, voltage is almost uh, same at that time. So, this is where this current is going to decrease. So, what we observe is that then this is tracing is uh, is under an area and the limits have to be also within an area for safe operation then uh, we can ensure that the device is not getting damaged. So, that is represented by this SOA safe operating area. So, here what you see that this is a uh, graph between your ID drain current and uh, your VDS and this graph basically shows the limits of operation. So, first of all what you see when this drain to source voltage is uh, small at that time this ID is going to increase the ID limit is increasing and this actually is coming from your this 
characteristics that you have forward characteristics that you have seen. So, here what you see that when it is in the uh, omic region at that time this is governed by this uh, slope and this slope is your basically your resistance RDS on. So, that is what we are going to observe while the VDS voltage is uh, small. So, it will be limited by the, the ohmic characteristics. So, this part is basically decided by your RDS on. over here. After that what happens is that, that uh, this, this one is your current limit, whatever is the max current that the device can carry. So, this is your current limit. And then this is your voltage limit this line. Now, in between also we see these uh, different different uh, lines and they are associated with your these pulse times and what we observe is that as the pulse time decreases your this line this slopey line this goes up. And what uh, is the origin of these lines? This actually is due to the maximum power dissipation limit. Now, we know that that your uh, this MOSFET The maximum power dissipation will be governed by your PD which is VDS multiplied by ID. So, this time this maximum power dissipation there is uh, of going to be a fixed limit on it and the gr greater the pulse width is this uh, the smaller is the maximum power dissipation that can be allowed. So, if you say that this is your pulse with TP uh, which may be your 10 millisecond here or 1 millisecond or 100 microsecond. So, as your pulse period increases the maximum power dissipation that can um, that is allowed is going to decrease and that is what we observe over here that as a your uh, this time is going to pulse time is reducing your maximum power dissipation limit is increasing. So, these are the various limits that you can observe in your safe operating area and accordingly when we do this kind of switching and uh, this type of uh, switching is called as hard switching. So, when we are going to do this hard switching at that time you have uh, to be uh, careful whether uh, you are under this SOA limits or not. So, what are the key points of uh, this lecture that voltage and current ratings are the important ratings that will be provided in the data sheet. Then you should also be looking for RDS on value, then gate to source voltage, uh, what is the threshold voltage that also you should be looking for, then turn on and turn off times and associated gate charges and uh, capacitances as well. Then diode turn off characteristics is also something important to look for in the data sheet and your SOA graph. Thank you.